listening to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III encourages us to pray without ceasing throughout the day, every day, for the glory of God. Good day to you, wherever you are in the world. We are thankful to God for all of you who listen to our broadcast and uh, who participate in this broadcast and who pray with us. I just read for another one of our uh, broadcast texts that so many people simply in this day and time do not make the time to pray to God and that is a tragedy, tragedy rather. And so we thank the Lord for you faithful who see the importance of prayer. Prayer is where the power is. Make no mistake about it. As always, it is so good to be with you today and to encourage you to pray. Today, by the grace of God, I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled, God is Able to Meet All Your Needs by George Cuff. God is able to meet all your needs. A word from the scripture true. In all of your ways follow his lead. It's amazing what he will do. Our Lord will make all grace abound so that his blessings flow, causing your praises to resound as your giving begins to grow. You will receive all that you need to share with others each day. You trust in faith and plant the seed with joy and not with dismay. God loves a giver whose heart is pure, the one who finds joy in giving. His mind is at rest, for he is secure in the values by which he is living. He who supplied the seed to the sower will increase your store of seed, providing bread from field to grower in increasing measure indeed. You will be rich in every day, or rather, you will be rich in every way, and every day, by the way, in grace, in truth, and deed. You will be generous every day, blessed to help those in need. Such service brings praise to God above for heeding what is right. Many will lift their voices in love while praying both day and night. Through prayer, their hearts go out to you Though they cannot see your face, knowing God has brought them through because of his amazing grace. This is the God we serve so true. Our Father, the Ancient of Days, to him we ascribe the glory due, to him we give honor and praise. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> wherever you are, you ought to tap somebody and say, Amen. The simple purpose of this broadcast is to motivate, to encourage, to challenge, to exhort you to simply just pray. Don't make a big fuss about it. Don't make a big deal out of it. Don't be afraid of it. Just pray. Be simple in your prayer life. This radio broadcast is not necessarily for people who already know the secret and power of prayer and who actually practice genuine prayer on a regular basis. Rather, it is for those who may find it difficult to pray or for people who claim they do not have time to pray. I am convinced that most Christian people do not need to learn how to pray, they need to just simply pray. 
If I can get you, if I can encourage you, if I can motivate you to just pray, all sorts of wonderful things, I believe, will begin to happen for you, your family, and whatever God has called you to do. We do not pray, ladies and gentlemen, based upon our subjective feelings. We pray rather based upon objective facts, objective facts in the Word of God. Our prayer motivator verse for today is 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 and verse 15, which reads, And Hannah was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And Hannah answered Eli, and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Allow me to shed some light on this verse from Matthew Henry's commentary. Hannah mingled tears with her prayers. She considered the mercy of our God, who knows the troubled soul. God gives us leave in prayer, not only to ask good things in general, but to mention that special good thing we most need and desire. Hannah went away with satisfaction of mind. She had herself, by prayer, committed her case to God, and Eli had prayed for her. Prayer is heart's ease to a gracious soul. Prayer will smooth the continents. It should do so. Uh, or rather, prayer will smooth the continents. It should do so. None will long remain miserable who use aright the privilege of going to the mercy seat of a reconciled God in Christ Jesus. Somebody ought to say amen. Our prayer motivator quote today is from Douglas Moo. He said, the faith exercised in prayer is faith in the God who sovereignly accomplishes his will. When we pray, our faith recognizes explicitly, or if you will implicitly, the overruling providential purposes of God we may at times be given insight into that will, enabling us to pray with absolute confidence in God's plan to answer as we ask. But surely those cases are rare, more rare even than our subjective emotional desires would lead us to suspect. Ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator devotional today is part two of our series titled How to Use Your Faith in God. How to Use Your Faith in God. From that Prince of Prayer of Years Gone By, Dr. John R. Rice. Now over the next few broadcasts, we are going to study, if you will, and look at uh, together some ways to have faith, some ways to have faith in God. The first way to have faith is to learn the Word of God. We are plainly told in Romans ten seventeen that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Originally, the Word of God was principally gotten or received by hearing instead of reading. There were few copies of the Word of God in those days, all copied by hand. Most people could not read, so they got the Word of God or they received the Word of God secondhand from someone else who could. So faith came by hearing, that is, hearing the Word of God. 
but the essential point is that faith principally comes by familiarity and heart understanding of the Word of God. If you want to have faith in God, you must know His Word. That is true. First of all, because faith is based upon God's promises. If God said He would do a thing, He will. If God made a proposition, He will stick to it when it is accepted. God's guarantees are always fulfilled. But you will not know what God has promised, dear friend, unless you learn His Word. So one who wants to please God with a faith that gets prayers answered and gets for him all that God wishes to give him should set out to find the blessed promises of God. Search for them through your Bible. Read them with delight. Mark them for quick reference. Memorize them so that the blessed assurance of them may sink into your soul. Learn God's promises if you would come to depend upon Him, if you would come to have strong faith in Him and pray to Him with that strong faith. Now that leads us to our time of prayer together. Please remember the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. Now, friend, please join me in prayer and join me in prayer to God with faith in God because God answers prayer. Holy Father God, we are indeed weak and feeble, but thou art strong. We pray that you give us spiritual, mental, and physical grace and strength for the journey today. Lord, we individually can confess our sins, our disobedience, our pride, our rebelliousness, whatever the sin is in our lives. Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins as we from our hearts, by your grace, forgive others. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we pray that you would fill us afresh and anew with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit to do your will and not ours. Deliver us today from temptation, evil, and sin. And grant us, Lord, your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to live right, to love right, to think right, to do right, to do that which is pleasing, Lord, in thine sight, and help us to be what we ought to be, not only in public, but at home as well. Holy Father God, help us not to be hypocrites and phonies and fakes. Lord, we pray for the healing and blessing of every Christian marriage, every uh, ministerial marriage and family. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his host, Lord, from every pastor and his wife and from their family and from their church. Lord, we pray for every pastor, church leader, and missionary that they would stand and do your will and not theirs. Holy Father God, we pray for over three million people to come to know your Savior through this ministry here at Gospel Light Society alone. We pray for millions more to get saved and come to know your Savior through other ministries around the world. Help us to assist them to be a blessing and help where we can. Lord, we pray for the revival of the church. We pray for the healing of this nation. We pray, Lord, for our president that you would lead, guide, and direct him and give him wisdom, as well as all governmental officials in this country and around the globe. Now, Lord, we also pray for three people that we have chosen from our prayer list here at Gospelite uh, Society to pray for out of, uh, uh, thousands of prayer requests. Lord, we have chosen these three and we present them before you today. We pray for Afzal in Pakistan. Uh, we pray that you'll heal his pastor uh, from stomach ulcers, piles, they call it piles, P-I-L-E-S, and other sickness. Bless them, Lord, with an apartment as well. 
And Holy Father God, we pray for LF in Tennessee. We pray for her family unit and finances. We pray for BC to give his life to you and to restore his relationship with his family. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Willie in Papua New Guinea. Heal her mother from cervical cancer in a miraculous and merciful way. And Holy Father God, we pray for the following uh, people who have received you into their hearts recently, who have gotten saved. Lord, we thank you for saving them. Thank you for using us in a small way in your great work and ministry. And Lord, we are humbled to be a part. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen these in the faith, lead God and direct them to do your will, help them to find good Bible-believing churches in their community. And Lord, uh, help them to utilize uh, the additional church uh, churches, local churches that we've added to our map worldwide. And we pray that you would uh, give us even more so that once people get saved, they can join with the Bible-believing church in their community, get baptized, and be discipled locally, along with what we do here. Lord, we pray for these. Maria in South America. We pray for Juan in Nicaragua. We pray for Lakeisha in Virginia. Uh, now, Lord, we pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, but who have... Uh, gotten away from you somehow, now they're coming back. They're recommitting their lives to you. They are rededicating their lives to you, and we rejoice with them in this decision and pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray, Lord, specifically for Bob in uh, this country, Kathy in New Zealand, and Kufa in Zambia, this country being America. Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we thank you for your mercy, love, and grace. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to pray for these. Please hear and answer our feeble prayers. In Jesus Christ, the name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you are listening to this broadcast and you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior, Please listen to the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and verse 13, that if thou, you shalt confess with thy mouth of the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is very simple. It was not simple for God to do for us, but it's very simple for us. So, a friend of mine, if you're willing to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please pray this simple prayer with me and just mean it from your heart. You can repeat it after me, phrase by phrase. Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner. I realize that I have done bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you have just received Jesus Christ into your heart, I want to be the first to congratulate you on doing the most important thing you'll ever do in your life. Please feel free to contact us today so that we can send you a free copy of our pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. This will help you get started in your Christian life. Until next time, remember, dear friend, pray, think, do. God bless you.